Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're talking about a last minute change that CDPR made to the balance council system that in some cases will dramatically affect the vote that is going to close in just a few hours. So let's dive in because this happened so recently that I only just realized that this is a thing. So I'm guessing you might not have seen it either. So there are two big changes. One change, which is immediately effective for this upcoming session that is about to end in a few hours, instead of the maximum number of cards that get changed in each of the different categories, those being power increase, power decrease, provision increase, provision decrease, as you all know, previously that was up to 15 cards per category per season, which was a lot. However, going forward, at least for this upcoming session, it's going to be reduced down to just five changes per category. So that is one third what we had before. Then for the next cycle, in this case, this is not going to affect the one that we are going to have closing in just a few hours. But after that, in the next month, that next cycle, we will have to get up to 50 wins in ranked mode rather than the current 25 wins. So significant changes, some of which are going to be effective basically immediately, and another one which will be effective in about a month. Let's dive in a little bit more about those because those can change a lot. I mean, first of all, this announcement came one day before the votes were going to be finalized. So why is this type of announcement that is so significant and will change the way that many players want to vote happening so soon before the vote would be much better if they gave players enough time to know that this announcement and this change was being made and then understand what the implications of those announcements might be because those changes are probably going to have pretty significant effects on what players want to actually vote for. At least in my case, most, if not all, the votes that I, and I'm sure many others wanted to have, may now have little to no chance of winning, but CDPR gave us little, if any, time to change those votes. When it comes specifically to reducing the maximum number of changes per category per season from 15 down to 5, that means that obviously only the top 5 vote recipients will get changed, which means less overall change from month to month. The top 5 vote recipients are less likely to have variety since most of those top vote recipients are likely to be cards from the top five to ten decks or archetypes and some of those votes will likely be to reverse unpopular votes from the previous season like fever hunters and many others that i've heard some people saying as well that leaves really only one or two votes per category from outside the top few decks at best that might get changed which means minimal overall potential for significant changes to which archetypes and decks are more or less effective and more likely that large groups large influencers can control most or potentially even all of the changes every season, so less likely for small groups or individuals to have their votes win. Then when it comes to increasing the number of wins that people need to have from 25 to 50 standard mode wins per season, obviously that's going to make it harder for people to become eligible to vote, which means less total people will be eligible to vote, which means less people will vote. And trying to put a number on how much additional time that means players will need to play in order to become eligible, assuming that you spend no time at all creating or testing a deck, so basically you net deck, spend 15 minutes per match, and win 50% of your matches, it will take 25 hours of matches each month to qualify. However, if you make your own decks, play matches more slowly, play seasonal or draft modes, play matches specifically for cycle quests and or dailies, and or have a lower win rate, then that is going to be a much longer time commitment for you. So that means many high-ranking standard players are likely to already have met that criteria. Pro-ranked players are even automatically eligible, but the lower-ranking standard players and players who play seasonal or draft modes are much more affected by this change. So votes will be influenced much more by these high-ranking standard players. Votes will be influenced much less by seasonal draft and lower ranking standard players were more likely to get changes for the cards from those top five to ten decks and archetypes that those top players are playing and much less likely to have changes outside of those top five to ten decks and archetypes which probably means we're going to get more continuous back and forth between players buffing the top deck and archetype that they use and then nerfing the top deck or archetype that their opponents use with little to no long-term progress and that might exacerbate the issue of a small minority of players controlling the system making the balance Council seem less like a democracy and more like a system that only values the opinions of a small group of people. Because make no mistake, it is very clear that all of these changes are intended to make it so that pro rank players get more or less any and everything that they want every season, and there's little to no room for anyone else to have any say whatsoever. And remember, pro rank is only a very small percentage of the total Gwent playing community. 
So CDPR, your intentions here are very clear. You have systematically favored a vocal minority of the community by telling the majority of players that their opinions don't matter. So much so that many will be unable to voice those opinions, and those who do will be underrepresented. Without the continued support of that majority, the game will likely not have enough players to sustain itself, even with the company's various efforts to reduce the cost of maintaining the game. But excluding such a large portion of the players will lead to poor customer retention, causing whatever revenue you expected the game to generate to plummet. And that's a lose-lose situation. Instead, let's not decrease access to the Balance Council system. We want to maintain better player engagement, keeping both the Gwent player base and your balance sheet in a healthier place. At the very least, we should be able to update more than five cards per season to increase the variety of cards that get changed, and keeping the win requirement to be eligible to vote below 50 wins will help increase the number of perspectives that we can consider when making those votes. CDPR have suggested that they're open to receiving feedback on this topic, and I hope that's true, because as it stands, these changes would exclude the majority of players. And that is not a recipe for success. I'm sorry, I don't have time to reassess all my votes, let alone make a video to explain all those changes, but I'm still hoping to give you a video with an update on the cards that we voted to change, and my first reaction to those changes. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.